All right. Scruff, it's recording right now. Hello, G. G. How are you doing today? Tired. I've been doing a lot of gardening. Oh, gardening. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have a lot of questions to ask you today. I, I went through all the lists. Ask away. I'll, I'll, I'll try to uh, make it not too long. But before we before we start on uh, talk about how bastard, I want to talk to you about apostles. Okay. I want to know um, how did you meet the apostles and how did you end up um, join, joining them? Um, my brother, uh, Big Toot, he was one of the first people in the northeast of England to make a really cool live music venue. Uh -huh. And shit, loads of bands played there. Loads of bands played there from, oh God, every, just all the bands played there. And, uh, and he used to go off to London and he came back one time with these demo tapes. And um, I think it was called The Second Dark Age, The Second Apostles Demo. Uh -huh. And he brought me a copy and I played it and I loved it, just loved it. And, you know, at the time I was listening to Conflict and Crass and all these bands. And, um, and then I got hold of that uh, Blow It Up, Burn It Down, Kick It Till It Breaks EP, the first seven inch. Uh -huh. And uh, oof, just adored that. Then he brought that again. He, can you remember in England there was two music papers? One was called Sounds and one was called NME. And in Sounds or NME, there was a, a little uh, article, Apostles Seek Guitar Player. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he said, he said to me, Write, write to them, try it. And uh, I was already in touch with Andy Martin from the Apostles because we used to write to each other. And uh, I did it, and I wrote, it and I was accepted. And I, I couldn't play guitar. I still can't play guitar. Still can't play guitar, but I couldn't play guitar. And uh, he learnt me a few chords, and I went to London and stayed there a long time, and became active recording, doing a lot of things. Yeah, that's it. By any chance. Was this in 1985? Because you were on the Smash Smash the Spectacle EP that was yeah. released by Motor Motorhead. Yeah. We we before that, but that was the that was the first recording I did with the Apostles. Yeah, Smash the Spectacle. Okay, but then on what year did you join the Apostles? What was that? Uh, 84. 84. Okay, were you on then? Um, uh, were you on Punk Obituary album or no? Was it after yeah. that? Yes. Well, oh, that yeah. that you were on that. Yes, because that's my favorite Apostles album. <laughs> okay, then I have a question. Why is that recording so different than how much longer album that came out in 1986? The quality and everything. Why is it so different? Because the Punk Obituary was like really good, professionally recorded. Then how much longer album came out? That was a major difference. Why was it so yeah. different on that? Um. <laughs> I think one of the reasons was because the the studios the studios had changed um, uh, from recession studios to oh god I, Jesus I can't remember but that album how much longer that I seem to remember the 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 what it took to record that was paid for by a guy called Andy Brandt in. Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, and he, okay. He he um, subsidized the recording of that that album. Uh huh. And um, uh, Punk Obituary was uh, it was a different studio and a different engineer. Uh huh. And um, you got to remember that no one had any money, and no one still got any money. So it was just. It was just, it's just the way it turned out, really. It's just the way it happened. This is, this is very interesting because I could tell by that song, Punk, uh, Punk Squatting, that's kind of your style on guitar. 
but I didn't until now. I didn't even knew you played on Punk and Vitri until you told me the year you were in the Apostles because that album came out in 1985. That was yeah. so different style. Wow. Then um, you also played in the the Lies in the Time of the Apostles album in '86. Yes. yes. Okay. How many albums did you play in Apostle? I thought you played only one album, but you, you played more. Uh, do you know what? I, do you know what? I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, you played in the album and Seven Inch. No. Yep. Okay, which one was this? I used to have it many years ago, but I don't have it anymore. There's a picture of you in the back of the album. You, you had like, a, I guess, a crass symbol holding a so football, soccer or something. Was that you? Uh, sure? uh, for, uh, this is so a long time ago. I don't have that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It, I, I think it was like a, you had a dreadlock. Somebody from the past had a dreadlock with a crass thing on, on their sh shoulder holding a soccer ball or something. I can't, I, uh -huh. did, you know, it was so long ago. Yes. I, mean, I was like, I was like, well, I was, I was so young. And I, 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 I couldn't remember. Online, I was trying to look for Apostles playing live. Did Apostle play it at all? I can't find any photos. Okay, the, okay, the first lineup of the Apostles played at the Zigzag Squat gig. Uh-huh. Uh, infamous gig uh, with, with uh, the mob. Uh, they did another show with the mob because there's a cassette. And on the cassette, there's a boot going into going into a British copper's face, and that's the mob and the apostles live at the LMC in Hackney, I think. The apostles' first lineup played played at the Zigzag Squat event, um, played some other shows, but basically, uh, Andy didn't like playing live. He didn't like it, kind of like in a way with Rudimentary Peni and all those bands. He kind of didn't like it. He preferred the more uh, he preferred the more studio side of it and recording and the artwork and, and making, you know, and making all that stuff. But uh, I remember I remember the first time I met, not one of the, not the first time I met, but the Apostles had a drummer called Chris Lou and I went to visit visit him. And me and Chris played a, played a short set in Scotland in the winter, walking over fields and fields and fields. We... We got to this hut, and there was an uh, I Poloi played, and the not the alternative I Poloi and A O A All Out Attack, they played, and we did some um, some songs as well, and and we played a gig in Hackney with Andy, uh -huh. a guy called Martin Ryan, uh, who was in a band Sons of Bad Breath, oh, yes, I... which was a great great lot of fun, and. Um, yeah, but it was always quite. It always seemed to be quite disastrous. But Andy, Andy is is his his band unit have played loads of shows, so he did get into it after the Apostles, and he I think he played a lot of shows with Academy Twenty Three as well. So yeah. So wait, all this time you've been in the Apostle, you did you played two shows with the Apostles? Yeah, two shows, and they weren't even our shows. I'm I'm shocked to hear that. I know, but I know that's that's one of the reasons why I formed Hell Bastard because I wanted to play live and fucking play live. Yeah, well, we'll get to that later. Hell Bastard, I, I have more questions about the Apostles. Wow, okay. I'm shocked to hear that. I thought you guys would have went on tour. No wonder I couldn't find any pictures online. There was never and there was never an Apostles tour ever. That didn't happen. No, no. What was it like working with Andy, Andy and David from the Apostles? Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Uh huh. Yes. Um. Uh, uh, Andy, uh, Andy Martin is a true artist. Uh huh. True artist. He is. He has dedicated his life to art, music, Humphrey. Art, music. Come here, Humphrey. Come here, Humphrey. It's me, dog. Humphrey, come here. Meet you. Come on, meet you. That's you. See, I love you. He's getting jealous. He's, he, needs, he needs to stick his nose in. All right. Come on. All right. Yes, Andy's a true artist. Dave, um, come on then. All right. All right. See ya. See ya then. Bye, Humphrey. Bye. See ya. 
Bye. Damn. Dave is, um, Dave ended up getting married. He moved to France, I think, and he got married. Oh, okay. And he has a child. Um, I was reading all the stuff from the apostles in the old days. I used to have the albums. You know how it is. Years go by, you lose stuff. Your friends buy, yeah. you never get it back. Yeah. Reading all the material, they were really, um, uh, were they really militant? Because they always had a gun with the anarchy sign and they they didn't like pacifists. So were they really like that? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, but, but let's let's just be careful what we see here. Uh -huh. Because I was wondering how did it go playing with the crass dance in the old days with the zigzag club with the apostle? How did that go with the crowd? Because they were so against pacifism, they were militant and straight out. How did that go with the crass crowd? Um, I think I, th I think the apostles were were viewed as, viewed as this eccentric, uh -huh. eccentric bunch of very different, but very eccentric. And I think people were more what the fuck, than, oh, wow, I like this, I like this, you know, so, yeah, just viewed as different and eccentric. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you leave? Um, because, because, I've, because I wanted to make something heavier, something more heavy and more visceral. Okay. That's a really a big musical difference, switching to the apostles and going heavy from like heavy to playing Hellbaster style. Now, how did that musical switch happen? I mean, what what influence did you get to switch like that? That's a big well, difference. The, I, I was I got into punk rock in 1976. Oh wow. Okay. So the first wave of punk, that's what I because of my brother. Uh-huh. And you know, and um, I remember the first British punk band to release an album was The Damned, mm -hmm. and my brother had that record, and he used to play it a lot, and he loved it, and he loved it. But before punk rock, round about 1974, round about 1973 or 1974, my brother liked football, uh -huh. and we went to a professional football game. In, in Newcastle, where we were from, Newcastle, Newcastle upon Tyne. And I nearly died because there was a crowd, a crowd surge, because there was no seats. Okay. Everyone was standing. And there was a crowd surge, and I went, and I, and I got crushed. Uh -huh. And this copper, a copper, all I remember, he grabbed me and pulled me on the pitch and gave me orange juice to drink. And I was turning blue because I couldn't breathe. Because of the weird people on me, and I and then I remember seeing, then I remember hearing the Sex Pistols, but I'd already heard the Damned because the Damned were the first punk rock band to release a record in the UK. Uh -huh. Um, and I remember thinking, "Fuck, I love Steve Jones' guitar sound. I like that that heavy guitar sound. I just really liked it." And I'd heard Black Sabbath. I'd heard all of this. But there was something that resonated with the pistols, and um, and and it's just that it's just the progression of punk to the to an and the second wave of punk, the anarcho punk stuff, and then thrash metal and hardcore, everything mixing, and then it's just a progression, a natural progression, I think. Speaking of your brother, earlier you said that um your brother used to put out shows. Punk yes, oh, yes, oh yes, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like, like, so tell tell me some of the bands you saw then, if he needs oh, okay, okay. Uh, the Clash, the Subhumans, Antisect, Amoebix, uh, Disorder, Chaos UK, Banalist from Sweden, Svart Vamted from Norway, uh, uh, Existence, Skeptics, Riot Squad, Mau Mouse. Uh, Oi Polloi, uh, fucking hell, uh, oh, oh god, you you name it, <clears throat> those bands played, played his shows, yeah. Since you mentioned the 70s, 
Um, how about the seventies? Did you see seventies punk rock bands besides? Yeah. The- of course, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, one of the, I think one of the first bands I ever saw was a band called Ah, what? Oh God, the Noise Toys from Newcastle. A oh. band called the Noise Toys, yeah. Oh, and of course there was Total Chaos, not. Obviously, the American Total Kiosk, the British Total Kiosk, who released many records, um, some great records. There are no Russians in Afghanistan, Seven Inch Fields. I used to have that. Yeah. The Revolution Part 10. Same thing yeah. happened again. I used to have Seven Inch. Yeah, yeah. These uh, bands come from Gateshead, where I'm from. Yeah. Are, yeah. are they still around or do you, are they still, no? No, uh, some of them are playing, yeah. There's all these bands, all those bands like Total Kiosk, The Reptiles, The Model Workers. Um, the people are still into music. I don't know if all the bands are still playing. I don't think Total Kiosk are. But um, no, they're still very active in different areas of, um, shall we say, um, subversion. Wow. Just, just really quick, speaking of the 70s, okay, we're just talking about the punk fashion, all right? In the yes. 80s, punk rockers started still screening shirts and stuff like that. 70s, was it punks who were making their own shirt with marker and painting oh. and stuff? Oh, yeah. 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 We uh, all did. Yeah. It was all DIY, right? Yes. Yes. And Because I was looking at some of the books from the 70s punk rock. Yeah. Um, in, I think it was called In the Gutter. Oh, yeah. In the Gutter. I used to have that when I was in high school, a long time ago. I used to have that book. Yeah. I, I bought it somewhere, and I noticed even the guys back then, punks, a lot of punks used to wear eyeliners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they even wear um, just all kind of makeup and stuff. Guys used to do that. What, what happened to the whole DIY, making your own clothes? Why did it die out in the 80s? <clears throat> I well, think... I, makeup. I think what I think what happened with that DIY ethic was I mean I'm, I mean you know I'm not I'm not blaming Malcolm McLaren and Vivian Westwood because they had shops called Seditionaries and Boy and of course the sex shop on Kings Road and all this stuff and you could go in there and you could buy uh, bondage trousers you know and uh, long sleeve tops with the dog collars on the end you know like John Lydon used to wear Destroy with it, you know, their old things, you could get all that. It became like you could buy yourself an identity, and in that, the whole identity was removed, and it became and it became so mainstream. And I think it, it was it was it, it was just it was just removed from the DIY ethic was still present, but it, it kind of. Yeah, everything changed. Good question. Good question. I'm just everything. wondering. This is a change of the fashion. So I, I was just wondering. I'm very yeah. surprised you were involved with the 70s. I, I somehow thought you you were you got into it in the 80s and stuff. Wow, that's int- interesting oh. punk rock stuff. No. Okay. I was little little, little punk rock at nine years old. Wow. Because of your brother. Your brother got into you. Because of your brother, yeah. Wow, that is really interesting. Okay. Now now back to the hell bastard. What year did you start a Hellbaster then? 1984. That is the same time you were in Apostles. Uh, yeah, but uh, but you got to remember that when you look at England, you oh. got said here, and you got London here. So there's quite there's quite a, 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 a you know it's like 400 miles maybe 400 oh. for such a long way. So I lived here. But I spent a lot of time here. But yeah, yeah. The early Hellbusted lineup was actually rehearsing in in London. We actually did that with uh, it was me, Phil, and Simo, and we rehearsed in London a lot because it was free because we we couldn't afford to rehearse up north. But then, but we did. But um, yeah. Um, God, Jesus Christ, how do I? Exp- you know this whole. You know this whole. Um, thing about crust and all this stuff uh-huh. we used to go to the rich neighborhoods and take clothes off the line because we couldn't afford to buy clothes uh-huh. we would go into fields and dig up tatties we would dig up potatoes and turnips to have something to eat to make something to eat uh-huh. we were hungry and we didn't have 
any money. You know. I have a question then. If you went to the, you took clothes from the rich people's clothes, how did yeah. the clothes become so dirty and the pants look like, you don't want, <laughs> it looks like leather from far away? Because we didn't have washing machines. We didn't have, we, did, we didn't, because <laughs> we didn't wash our clothes. Wow. We didn't have washing machines. I mean, I saw some old photos of the Hellmaster stuff and all the old crusty. It looked so dirty. No, yeah. no one had any disease or went to the hospital, skin yeah. disease. We, we, we made, unlike, unlike today, we made very good immune systems. Wow. I'm just curious that if you were so dirty back then, how did you end up going on dates or, or anything like that? I, I can remember some people that used to stink, but none of us used to stink. We still used to bathe and wash. I mean, hygiene, hygiene is a very good thing. And, uh, but I knew some people that were just, you know, oh, Jesus. But it's, it's, but you, have to, you have to realize as well, if you don't wash your hair for a year and a half, it'll still clean itself because the body produces natural oils. And it cleans your skin as well. So there's no, you know, it, it takes a very special person to stink. Cheers. That, oh, I'm drinking a tea. Cheers. So is, is that where a lot of punks in England, they start washing their hair with spikes and the spikes turn to all dreadlocks? That's what happened? That's how everybody started getting dreads naturally? When the dreadlock was really popular in the 80s? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what each individual... I don't know. I don't know. I just... All I right. just think... I don't know. I don't know. Now, let's go with your first demo. Uh, what? Tell me some story behind the Ripper of Crust demo. That, yeah, that demo is very classic. Tell me the story behind that. Um, uh, if you remember anything from the first yeah, demo. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, we, we would... Uh, of, our first bass player um, was... He's dead. He died um, some years ago. Oh. Simo, he died. Um but we got a stable lineup with a guy called Scotty on bass, Phil on, Phil on drums, and myself. And we got serious. And um, they used to drink alcohol, whereas I never, I never used to drink alcohol. And uh, they would always go to the pub, but I used to just stay home writing bad songs. And those bad songs became Rip Our Crust. And we used to rehearse and rehearse. And, 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 and that demo cost £25 to record oh. which back then was a lot of money for us uh -huh. and um i think phil phil had parents he had like a mom and a dad and scotty had a mom and a dad but i didn't have a mom and a dad so so they had their money to to put towards the demo but what i did was in england you could get pop pop bottles, soda bottles and you could take them to the store and get 12 pence back on a bottle like or 10 pence deposit. Oh. So I'd go around with my bicycle, stealing lots of bottles and, and, and getting the money back off the bottles. And that would be my money towards that demo. Oh, wow. And we, we, we met a guy called Bry, who became the drummer of Hellbuster in 1988, two years after Ripper Crust. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, there's a studio where I live in Northumberland, which is on the borders of Scotland, you know. You can come there and record. So we did, and that's how we did Rip a Crust and Hate Militia in those studios. Wow. And, and that came out in 1986, right? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. And I have a question on one, on one of the songs called Nazi Kill. Yes. Um, I thought all that Nazi problem was in the early 80s during crash days. Were you guys still having Nazi problems? Is that why you wrote that song? Or no, Christ, the, 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 the right wing problems when they, what, have, been, have been in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. It's been right through. Oh. It's, been a, it's been a prolific thing. Uh -huh. You know, I won't mention any names, but people used to hire a bus and they used to travel to football matches to actively beat up National Front skinheads. Oh, wow. And that was, that was in the 60s, 70s, mm -hmm. you, you know, and the 80s. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Wow. So then um, speaking of all these interviews and stuff, I've been, like, talking to some of the English band. I noticed a lot of people squatted in the 
80s and everything. Was London that poor in the 80s? Like, really yeah. Well, it was if you were it was if you were in receipt of unemployment benefit and you didn't have a job uh -huh. and you were, you were actually squatting. Yeah, of course. Oh God, yeah. There was many squats in London in the 80s. Many. That's very, very interesting. Okay, and your guitar sound, what kind of equipment and pedal did you use for that demo? For Ripper Crust? Yeah, that was a very unique sound. Uh, I used, okay. I used um, Oh no! This is this is a pedal I love now. I love this pedal. Uh -huh. It's just a Nova Drive. Oh. But I, love, I love this pedal. But um, I used a Boss HM2, a Boss Heavy Metal 2 pedal. It's black and orange. Oh. The problem with them is the batteries die really quickly. Okay. But I used that, a very simple standard guitar with shit pickups. And I think the studio's gear, which was a Marshall, a Marshall JCM 900 head mm -hmm. and a 4x12 cabinet. And that was it. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Then I think it was your second demo. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was a hate military demo cassette tape. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, is that the demo where, like, every time when you each song while they're playing, there's a woman doing poetry? Is that, is that, yes. am I? Yes, um, that was amazing. What 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 happened? What happened to her? That I think that sounds so cool. She was she was uh, she was called Wendy, and she um, and she wasn't really into that style of music, but I think because I twisted her arm, she did that. Um, she wasn't into that. She liked she did like Amoebics. She really did like Amoebics. Um, she did she 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 just did it because I asked her to. Did she ever did it live as well? She got on stage. No, never live. No, no. Oh, wow, that would have been amazing. Because I, I really like that a lot. Because um, I don't know if you remember, uh, my long time ago, I had friends in Long Beach. Uh, Mark, Mark, Danny, and them. They went to England. They brought all these cassette tapes. Marky D. You, you know, uh, yeah. They, 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 Marky D, Little Al, uh, Calhoun. Oh, Kaun, I haven't seen since the 80s. That's the last time I saw Kaun. I'm still in touch with uh, uh, Limey, David David House. Limey Lime, Lime is from, yeah. Yes, um, I used to see Limey a long time ago, Long Beach. Last time I saw Limey was probably 1988. Was wow, like I seen him. We played in uh, in Los Angeles in 2009, and I seen him then. And we played then 2010, and I seen him then again. Oh, I'm, I'm going to talk about L.A., Los Angeles later on because I have important questions about Los Angeles. But, yeah. But, oh, but there was a guy, there was a guy, there was a guy that, there was a, oh, God. Is it Jeff Bangs? Do you know Jeff Bangs? There was two Jeff. No, three Jeff. I remember three Jeff. How did, how did he look, though? I can't remember, but, but he, I remember the story. He went somewhere. And he either met a girl or, or she was a hookah or something like this. And when he woke up in the morning, there was in lipstick written on the mirror in the hotel, welcome to the death club. You now have AIDS. Uh, and I, I, know that. I think he died. He died? Mm. Mm hmm Oh, in, he's from California, right? Yes. He passed yes. away in the, in the 80s, right? Natural. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, God, this is so long time ago. He, he was friends with Brian from Dreams of Tomorrow? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Wow. Just... But I'm, I'm still in touch with Ron. Uh, Ron from, you know, he, he had a band, Glycine Max. Reagan, yes. Gl Glycine Max actually covered one of your songs. Yes, Nazis Killed. Yes, I know. Yes. And speaking of Limey. Um, there was a, you know, the Axe Grinder first album. Yes, of course. There's a picture. I thought I thought that was Limey standing because it kind of looked like Limey, one of the yeah. members. Yeah, yeah. You remember that? I was going, "Wow, well, that's Limey." I just I just saw Axe Grinder last year. They 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 played the first album. Oh wow, that's that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, it was cool. It was good. Really good. Tell me some stories about when the Long Beach Crust Crew Court came and visit you guys in England. Tell me some stories. 
Okay. Um. Oh God. Right. They they stayed they stayed at my little apartment. Uh huh. And I think there was oh God there was there was Marky Marky D, little Al. You know, remember little Al? Yes. Little Al, lovely lovely guy, little Al. Um, it's an Asian guy, right? The Korean guy. Yes. Yes, yes Al. Yeah. Um, little Al, Marky D, Limey was there, of course. Uh, oh God, I can't. There was a lot of them. Anyway, we uh, I took them to Liverpool. Uh-huh. We went to Liverpool and we went to see a guy, a friend of mine called Bill Steer, uh, who's in a band called Caucus. We went to visit him and we went to do all this stuff. We came back and Hellbastard had a show in Birmingham. And I remember a guy that had just become friends with me and Scotty. He did a really nasty thing to little Al on the way there or on the way back. I think it might have been on the way back. He was hitting him in the back and we didn't know about it. Yeah, it was really bad. It was really bad. It was nasty. He was very, he was very drunk. This guy. Uh, and, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it was punching, it, Al? punching Al. Yes, I'll oh. never forget. It. I'll never ever fucking forget it. And um, yeah, it was a, it was a weird time, but but overall, everyone really enjoyed themselves. And um, I sold a guitar actually. I think I sold a, a guitar that I had. To one of the Long Beach Crusco crew, um, and some records as well, a lot of records and stuff. But uh, no, they had a great time, and it was brilliant. And it was, and they really loved Newcastle Brown Ale. <laughs> and um, oh, I took them. I I think I might took them to where a band called Venom practiced, uh-huh. uh, black metal Venom, you know, uh, in Wall's End, and. Um, Oh, we went all over. We went, we we went all over the place. But yeah, no, they, they um, they, we had a great time, you know. That's really interesting because when uh, Mark came back from England, uh, I went to his pad and he had a party. He was uh, playing all that demo. He made us a copy of that, and I was like, wow, this is very interesting. He was in like all the crust music. They brought yeah. it all England, all these demo tapes. They were dubbing yeah. us and everything. Wow, yeah. that's very. I haven't seen Mark for many, many years, and all the people you mentioned, some of them I haven't seen since the eighties. Right. Okay. I think Mark. Do you know? I heard. I'm Limey could probably tell you the the truth about this, but I think Marky, Marky D got in. He he was a victim of a drive by shooting. Yes. Yes. Um. He, in the late eighties, he, he was he was involved with the gang. Back. It's a long, complicated story. Yes, that was in the late eighties. Yeah. Yes. He he grew up in a top tough neighbor in Long Beach. So um, I want to ask you this too. I, I always hear stuff about Hackney Hell Crew. What the hell is that Hackney Hell Crew? <laughs> okay, the Hackney Hell Crew was basically Eat Shit and Sons of Bad Breath. Uh-huh. And that was Martin Alien, who later formed a band called Coitus. Mm-hmm. From, uh, and Screamer, they had a band called Screamer. But that was Martin Alien, <clears throat> Rob Zo, Napoleon, uh, Captain, Captain, uh, oh God, no, I can't, Puss Good Breath, Puss Good Breath died actually, he was involved, I think it was to do with drugs in Bristol, which Bristol's near me, near here, where I am, but, uh, oh, Hackney Hell Crew were, were a bunch of, of, of punk squatters, that when you saw them coming down the street, it was like a big cloud of grey smoke, and, 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 Lovely, lovely people. Monty, Martin, Alien, Ollie. Ollie moved to Copenhagen or Denmark and he he died there. Simon Parrish, who was on some Apostles records as well. Really? As as Martin, because they all lived in the same they all squatted the same buildings, you see. Uh-huh. Lovely people, miss them a lot. And some of them are dead and some of them are still alive. But 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 Sons of Bad Breath was the Hackney Hell crew, really, and Eat Shit. And Eat Shit had a, had a singer called Sean, and they would get crash gigs, and Sean put on the most amazing American accent. Right. And, they had, and, and, he, and people thought they were from the US. He would do that on stage? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He, he'd, he'd introduce songs, he'd be like, okay, this one, 
Um, this one is called Hit the Deck because it's the gas attack. And, and, he, and he'd have a fake hand grenade and he'd go, okay, you motherfuckers, if none of you guys move tonight, the pin will go on this grenade and you will all die. You know, And everyone's like, fuck. Fuck, fuck. And uh, they had a great song here. This one's called Tough Shit Mondale because you're a fuck ass loser. And it was all about, you know, the current uh, Prime Minister elect and all this stuff. But each shit were each shit were fucking funny. They were they were just they just played noise, but Sean had a great presence. Oh. Everyone thought they were American wow. and they were from, from London. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Back to the whole this hackney. Hackney Hell Crew and the Long Beach Crust Core Crew. Because back in the 80s, right? Long Beach Crust Core Crew, they were dirty, but they always were a bunch of patchoulis. So you had a <laughs> strong fume of patchouli. What was the English UK crusties like that? Were patchoulis on the hair and clothes? Yes. Yes. That was a that was a I remember that being a big thing. Yeah. Patchouli. Yeah. And I remember I remember even in 1990 or 1989. Hellbuster had been asked by a, a heavy metal magazine called Kerrang! to go and do an interview in London. And we were waiting for the bus home, and two cops semi-arrested our other guitar player, Nick, because he had a green jacket on, which was stunk of patchouli. And they thought it was cannabis or drugs. Oh, wow. And also, our drummer, our drummer, our drummer Bry Newton, Bry, he had um, a T-shirt, Bollocks to the Pool Tact. Because it was 1990, yeah. And he got took away, and they made him change his fucking shirt in the toilets. They took him and said, turn it inside out, and then you can go free. Ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, God, yeah. But, but yeah, patchouli was a thing in the 80s and, and, and early 90s, yeah. Okay. Now the most funny, important question. Um, Stig told me to ask you. I think, yeah, the interview. Who came up the word crust? The word crust. Who started it? Crust. I, I did. Uh-huh. But for a different reason from that. It was, it was, it's all about environmentalism. Okay, so when Hellbastard... Okay, so you have, before Hellbastard, right? Remember, you had Disorder, Amoebics, Antisect, Discharge, you know. Even Alien, who drummed in Eat Shit and Sons of Bad Breath, he, him and Martin had a great band called Poison. Oh. And Poison were fucking awesome. They were like a mixture of anti-sect discharge and they were great, but they, they never, they only have one rehearsal demo. You know, they didn't, they didn't make any recordings. But um, on, the end, on the end of Ripper Crust, we, the, last, the last thing shouted is oh. me shouting, rip our crust! And then they echoed it. Crust, crust, crust. And, and that's the way that turned out. But the, And then we thought, let's call this demo, because we didn't have a name for the demo. Uh -huh. Called it rip our crust because of that. But it's also synonymous with the crust of the earth, earth's crust. Because everything was environmental. The reason That's the reason why the first album was called Heading for Internal Darkness. Uh -huh. it, mixture between environmentalism and schizophrenia the internal meaning not eternal internal uh -huh. um it, it's all it's it, it's all it's all about nature and, and 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 the beauty of nature so rip our crust the the the, the reaping and pillaging of, of 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 earth by humanity rip our, the crust is being ripped but um, we were practicing round about maybe very late 1985, and I ha and I was using a Boss HM2 heavy metal pedal. Oh. Now that pedal eats the batteries; the batteries die very quickly. So we were practicing, and my battery was nearly dead. And I said to Scotty, "I said, Scotty, this guitar sounded shit." And he said, "What do you mean?" And I said, "Well, listen." And I went, <laughs> and I goes, "It's really crusty." So the, but, but before I said that, there was other bands that kind of could have, but they just didn't. I think what happened was Hellbastard give give that whole thing a name. That's it. 
Uh huh. Wow, interesting. So then, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, no, go on. So when all the the crust crust thing got big in the eighties in England, crust school, where majority of all the crust people were they all vegetarians and stuff? A lot of people were, but there was a lot of people that said they were vegetarian and they weren't. Okay. A lot of people used to take the piss out of people saying, yeah, you, you see you're a vegetarian, but um, I saw you running from a, a, a hamburger bar with a, stuffing it down your face and then rejoining a demonstration in the street or something or whatever. There was a lot of that shit going on. But people, I mean, I can speak for, I can speak for myself. I, I was taken to an abattoir when I was at school. Uh-huh. And I saw a cow get oh, shot now. And that was that was 79. Wait, 90. in the school they took you to the slaughterhouse? Yeah, yeah. Wow, and crazy. And, and, I, and me and some friends were like, fuck this, I'm not eating animals. But again, remember, conflict. Conflict played a really good part in educating people about that whole uh, vegetarian ethic, you know. Oh. And and vegan was very vegan was very it was unheard of, you know. A, a, it was it was it was it was unheard of then. Until the late eighties, then it started hearing right the vegan vegan stuff. So, is it because mostly kids were young back then? So they say they're vegetarians, and behind someone's back they'll eat eat hamburger and stuff, or what? Is it because they were? Possibly. Possibly, they maybe a lot of people saw it as be as a way of being trendy or hip, you know. Because okay. I'm just curious, because like in the '80s, if you mention the word crust, I, I automatically think politically conscious vegetarian. They don't wash their clothes. But now online, if you type in crust, it comes out crust punks, like you know, sitting around asking for spare change on the street. Yeah, if you have any money, but you don't think about vegetarian. Like it changed so much, but. Did, did the crusade did that in the eighties too? Asking people for money. Have, I think even even in the seventies, um, in the seventies, if you had a mohawk, a mohican, uh-huh. there was, in in London it was it would be people would try to take photographs of punk rockers, uh-huh. and a lot of if if a lot of people saw that they'd say, hey, no, you pay, me. you want my photograph, you pay me. So it was a way of making money. Oh, so that's been going on since the seventies, then. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's interesting. Okay, since we talked about animal rights, how has your views on animal rights changed compared to the eighties? From now to the eighties, like, um, has it changed? Do you like um, your views? How, how has it changed on animal rights? Is it the same? dramatically, dramatically? Oh, how? How? For example, do you... um. I become more fierce and more, more, more um, vociferous uh-huh. in, in that whole uh, Holocaust. Uh, it's 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 time. It's time now. Uh-huh. People to walk into slaughterhouses and start shooting people. Oh wow! Fuck them! Fuck them! It's time to walk into slaughterhouses and fucking shoot them in the fucking face. Shoot them in the head and fucking kill people. And also, the hunting fraternity in this country, the fox hunters, it's, it's time. Bad. Sorry? Fox hunting is banned in England. Am I correct? Hunting is banned? Yeah. But it still goes on. It still happens because it's in high up circles. It's in the it's in it, the people that take part in it are like magistrates, high court judges, high up in the police, high up, wow. you know, wealthy and rich. And it's 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 still classed as tradition and culture. But it still goes on. It's rife. It it goes on. And it's time these people are fucking shot. <laughs> they need to oh. eat less. Wow. People, these people need to fucking die. I have to, since you say all this um, hard stuff, I got to tell you something. Even uh, in the 80s, w- w- at animal rights protests and stuff, the crusties, like Long Beach crusties, some will come all drunk, drunk and hide to the protest and like yell out crazy stuff, go all crazy. Yeah. I, I actually have a video, a video from like 80s McDonald's protests in the 80s. Yeah. Um, and 
like shoot out with the Y's. They'll make funny signs. They'll draw a big protest sign with the upside down pentagram with McDonald's 666. <laughs> everybody will be high, high or drunk. They would just scream <laughs> crazy stuff. And I was going, gosh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> they would come all the crusties in the 80s. They would come Long Beach, some of the Long Beach crusties in the 80s. They would come, I have this on YouTube channel. They would come drunk or high and do this. Yell out the most crazy stuff, like say six 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 in your thing, man, and that would be so embarrassing. Brilliant, brilliant. I, awesome. I noticed all the crusties are um, in the old days are so crazy on the whole um, rallies. But do you? Uh, last question, man. Rights. Do you still um, go to protests or attend animal rights meeting with the organization, or did you stop all that? No, no, no. Uh, it, it, it depends. It, um... <laughs> Again, we have to be careful how, what we talk about here. Oh, no, I'm just talking about legal way. Just going to holding signs, going to protest and stuff. Not um, protection, just protest and stuff. There's been a few, a few legal protests mm -hmm. that some friends of mine have, have been at. Uh -huh. um, yes, so, sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes, yeah. Yeah, just wondering, because... Here in America, sometimes when there's events and rallies, they'll have like a workshop or like have music and like, like they make it more fun, more more fun yeah. and stuff. So yeah. I was okay. But um, now back to Hellbaster. Who from Hellbaster went to Hell Crusher and Energetic Energetic Crusher? What, okay, so were you in that too or no? And energy, me uh, and a guy called Nick were in Energetic Crusher for a while. Uh huh. We were only helping them out with guitars. Energetic Crusher was formed by a guy called Ali and a drummer called Harry uh -huh. and a guy called Louie. And they were a four piece. And I think Danny, when Danny, the bass player, left, he, he actually, have you heard of a band called the Wild Hearts? No. Okay. The Wild Hearts were quite a, quite a bit of a thing uh, around the world in the 90s. Uh -huh. And the the singer of the Wild Hearts, Ginger, he formed the Wild Hearts after after seeing a Hellbastard show in 1987. Okay. And and Danny joined the Wild Hearts, but Energetic Crusher, um, members of Energetic Crusher, Ali and Harry, and uh, that's it, got together with the old Hellbastard bass player Scotty, and they formed Hell Crusher. Oh wow, interesting. Yeah. Then um, your first album. Oh, this is so long time ago. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, back in your album, there's a color photo, right? And there's a yes. Amoebex uh, banner drop in the background. Am I correct? Yes, that, that was one of my brother's shows. That's at Newcastle Riverside. And that was a gig. That was Hellbastard and Amoebix in 1987 at Newcastle Riverside Club. Yes. What year did you, that first album came out? In 1988. Was that the first first crust album that was full in color? Uh, possibly, because because if you had here's a thing. Ah, good question. Now here's a thing. Um, if you released a record uh -huh. and it had color in it, you had sold out. Uh -huh. You were then classed as being um, a sellout. Uh -huh. And the cover of the Hellbastard first album was a was an artwork painted by my old college professor, Yuna uh, Graham, and I asked her. I said, "Could I use that for a record cover?" And she said, "Yes." And when we got the deal with Mean Time Records, uh -huh. that's what I used for the cover. But it was it it was it it it, it, it seemed to be much better than some black and white typical thing with skulls. Uh -huh. and in this boring monochrome black and whites thing you know so that was my fault i, I made that happen and uh, i was happy that it was color but if you had a color record a color record cover in the 80s and even early 90s you were classed as wanting to be like metallica uh -huh. or or selling out fuck fuck uh -huh. stupid uh -huh. I, I, when I first saw it, I remember I was shocked. I would picture a Hellbaster album being black and white, skull, skulls, or, or or something like that. It was like 
full color front and back. That was very. We were very happy about it. Very happy. Did you ever um, play with bands? Like, because my friends used to be pen pals with them. Um, sore throat. Did you ever play with sore throat? Yes. Like that? Do, do any story? Because their songs are so short. Like, how do people dance? You could dance for a couple seconds and stop. Dance yeah. for seconds, like 30 second song, 60 second song. Yeah. I'm I'm really not a fan of that, but I'm not a I'm not a fan of many English bands actually. So, you know, oh. I don't like. There's many English bands I really don't like that you may you might think we all liked, but oh. I, I'm I'm I must be a weird one because there's a lot of English bands that I really don't like. Oh, I I really like the first album. That's why. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh. I couldn't. <sighs> Uh, I can't remember, but um, yeah. Who did you mostly play with, like Deviating Instinct or what? What bands? Uh, Sacrilege, Antisect, Amoebix, um, uh, 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 Conflict, uh, 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 uh and Conflict. That's a total different music style. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah, uh, um, loads of oh, fucking hell. Tons of bands, loads of bands, shit loads of bands. Slammer, uh -huh. Sacrilege BC from the from California, Sacrilege BC, uh, Sacrilege from England, uh, Axe Grinder, uh, uh, Sabbath, uh, uh, Napalm Death, Ripcord, Heresy, Concrete Socks. Do oh, I love Concrete Socks, the first two albums. So. Awesome band, awesome. Hey, but so yeah, look. Uh, look Loads of bands, loads, lots. I want to mention this because you, since you play with Conflict, how, how did all the punks with Spy Care and Mohawks, um, when you guys were playing Hellbaster, how, how did the audience with punk punkers with Spy Care? Did they like it or what? Yes, of course, because I'm a, I'm a I'm a mouthy bastard, and I have got a big I've got a big mouth, and I and I and I, and I, I I'm very passionate about our lyrics. Oh, oh okay. And, I love to I I love to I love to ex I love to sh I I love to get on my high horse and scream about what the song's about and then play it. Yes. I have to tell you something.